Hi, Cindy. Thank you very much for the introduction and invitation for the opportunity. Today, I'm going to talk to you about um, managing the grapevine trunk diseases in California, which is the, is the disease complex uh, my lab has been uh, working since my uh, new position uh, at UC Davis. So before I start uh, giving you information, I would like to acknowledge my uh, collaborators. Uh, most of the, uh, my lab members, uh, postdocs and graduate students have been working involved with this project, uh, as well as um, the farm advisors who has been dealing with this um, uh, grapevine trunk diseases in California. So today, uh, the outline is of the, my talk is going to be the grapevine trunk diseases introduction, uh, give you some of the, the current management strategies, uh, and also uh, tell you about the, what kind of research that we have been doing to protect the pruning wound uh, in the field and in the laboratory, and give you a little bit of research update that my lab has been uh, doing uh, since last uh, two years. A little bit um, like the general common information about the grapevine trunk disease, I'm sure you all know, but I just wanna remind you what they are, how do they affect the grapevine? So um, the, the, some of the uh, grapevine trunk diseases, which is an umbrella of the multiple diseases that you all know, for example, a young wine decline and ASCA, you type a dieback, bot canker or botrys varia canker, pomopsis dieback, and uh, some of the root diseases caused by the black food uh, disease a group of the pathogen. So these are the, like the common uh, grapevine trunk diseases that you all know uh, that under the, the name uh, trunk diseases. So when we look at the, each individual these diseases which caused by the different uh, group of the pathogen. Um, so when we look at the young wine decline and ESCA, which is also known as vascular diseases, which means uh, when these pathogens get into the grapevine, they colonize in the vascular tissues and then they move up and down in those woody tissues. In the meantime, uh, the grapevine also respond to this infection and then they produce some gumming and tylosis, which yeah, you can see in this picture, that try to prevent the movement of the pathogen in the grapevine that actually cause um, the kind of girdling in the xylem tissues and then cause the wilt uh, of the grapevine. So these are like the common um, the vascular uh, disease. When we look at the, 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 the symptom of the ASCA on the leaves that you can see tiger stripe that is known and also fruit symptoms in the black and uh, the white varieties that you can see. So when you look at these first symptoms, you may think that the, these are the fungi get into the berries or the leaves from outside, which is not the case. In these vascular pathogens, when the vascular uh, pathogens colonize within the vascular tissue, they produce some of the secondary metabolite. That metabolite or toxins is the one that cause this kind of symptom on the leaves and also berries, which means whatever you're gonna apply to control these pathogens, it has to be systemic within the wine. Whatever you apply from outside is not gonna affect and then control those young wine decline and ESCA uh, group of the pathogen. However, when we look at the canker diseases, which are Utaipa dieback, bot canker, pomopsis, and, and some of the black fruit disease, they also produce some uh, secondary metabolite within the canker tissue, tissue, within the wood tissue. They also cause this kind of stunning uh, the shoots, which is the case in Utaipa, and also that arm, which is the case for the Bortosferia group of the pathogen. These are the fungi that cause the canker, which means wherever they colonize in the wood tissues, they kill it. So there is no reversing back from these vines. So, uh, so those are the ones. So those are the most dangerous uh, group of the pathogen that because they kill the vine slowly and then sometimes they cause the apoplexy, which is the uh, quick decline of the grapevine. Uh, Pomopsis is another problem. Uh, it used to be known as a, just, just to cause the shoot dieback. Now we know uh, it also uh, could be involved with the canker uh, diseases. Black food is, is another story. Uh, it's like the group of soil-borne pathogen can colonize uh, within the, the, the root tissues and then they also cause or contribute 
these uh, grapevine uh, trunk diseases in uh, not only in California or worldwide grape growing areas. Most importantly, uh, most of these grapevine trunk disease pathogens are ascomycins, which uh, they are able to produce some kind of fruiting bodies. In this case, uh, pycnidia is the, one of the asexual fruiting bodies that they can produce and then land on the dead tissue of the grapevine. So when they are um, get contact, in contact with the water or precipitation, they just start releasing or oozing their spores where they can start moving and then infecting the new uh, grapevine in your vineyard. So they also produce uh, some of the, uh, another fruiting bodies, which is also known as the paratisia, which is the sexual um, the reproductive, um, the, the, the fruiting body of the ascomycete. In this case, the Bortospora is one of them. And then uh, what they do um, um, in this short movie that I wanna show you is that the, in Pycnidia, they just ooze their spores in the, in the around the, uh, the, the Pycnidia. In the Paratisia case, which is the, the different structure, when they are um, releasing the, their spore, they release the, their spores are shooting in the vineyard air. So which means they can be picked up by the rain uh, or, or wind. They can be uh, moved from one location a little bit longer uh, distance area. This is the one of the parties that they are, and you can see the shooting their spores in the uh, vineyard. So I'm just giving you an, an idea that the, how these fruiting bodies could release their spores in the vineyard. So therefore we can start looking for how we can manage to have or reduce the, these kinds of infection in the vineyard, which I'm gonna talk to you. So when we look at the, 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 the infection uh, the, the, the way of the, these grapevine trunk disease pathogens that the, the main um, the primary infection point is the pruning wound because or during the dormant season, we have to prune those vines every year. So those open wounds are, are becoming the entry point, these, um, the spores of the, or, of the, or conidia of, the, of the, these pathogens. This is the main entry point, which means we have to protect the pruning wound in order to prevent the initial infection of these grapevine trunk diseases. Another um, infection uh, way of is the latent infection, which means uh, some of these grapevine tr trunk disease pathogens land on the tissue and then they do the initial infection and then they stay there until the right condition comes. So which means uh, it could be a uh, uh, stress of the plant or it could be the other conditions that could be triggering those uh, latent pathogen to start becoming aggressive pathogen, which is the dangerous one. The recent uh, studies also showed that the, some of these, um, um, the grapevine trunk disease pathogens could be present within the tissue as endophytes, which means that they, they can be within the plant without causing any problem. But when the, when the plant condition compromised by the citrus, they could turn into the pathogen. So they are, there is no way that of, of getting away from these pathogens. So we have to uh, look at the entire picture. Uh, where do they occur? How do they infect? And how we can control these uh, pathogens? So in the past, uh, when I was postdoc in Dr. Gubler's lab in, in 2003, we did the spore trapping studies to understand how these pathogens could distribute in the vineyard air on under what condition and then during the what time of the year. So we did that simple um, uh, Vaselin uh, coated slide um, sample, which was uh, uh, very practical and cheap way to do that. So we look at the, these um, uh, patterns in, in the vineyard. So the, this is the study that was done in Sonoma in 2003. So in these um, lines, you, I'm gonna show you the January to December. Those are the time period that we look into the spores in the air. So all of these columns that showing you that the number of the spores that we uh, counted or collected during the year in that one particular vineyard. Then we look at the number of the spores, they coincide with the precipitation during the year. Whenever we have the precipitation, we have uh, the number of the spores in the air. 
no precipitation from May to October, no spores. And then in, in October, late October, the precip precipitation comes back and the spores come back. So this is giving us an idea like the when to look for um, or when to prevent those pruning wounds uh, from the vineyard. However, there's a problem here. So all the spores that is not present in the vineyard is the May to October, which you cannot make the pruning cut or pruning wound, um, the, which is the, not the dormant season. The most of the, the, the season that you wanna do it is the start from December to the uh, February. And in that case, so which case um, uh, we, I'm going to talk to you about how you can uh, prevent or protect this uh, pruning wound uh, from these infections. So this is showing the, 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 the temperature, which doesn't seem to be correlated with the number of the spores in the air. Just to give you like the common general information of the management of the of the, these grapevine trunk disease in vineyards. Protecting pruning wounds is the case, which I'm going to talk to you about uh, what we can do uh, so far. Use of the, the disease-free clean, clean plant material, which is very important when you get the, the, the some of the plant material has a latent or, or endophytic microorganism, they can show up in the late in the season, which is very important, which I'm going to talk to you about a little bit more. Applying good cultural practices is very important. Stress including water or, or in the, like the high heat stress in the middle of the summer is the one that could trigger some of those latent and endophytic infection within the grapevine that these grapevine trunk disease pathogen could come and then flourish, which is very important to keep your grapevine healthy with the good cultural practices. So delaying dormant pruning um, to the, avoid the potential pathogen dissemination that has been uh, done in the past. Um, uh, so it's very, uh, the labor intense, uh, the, the work that can be done um, uh, within the short time, uh, which is expensive. So recent studies from Europe and also some of the studies that we have seen in our, in our um, uh, the field studies that we found out that the we may not need to do the delay dormant pruning anymore, but we don't have enough data to back you up on that one yet. So some of the preliminary results from our research shows that the, so when we do the early pruning, those pruning woods could be colonized by the naturally occurring beneficial organisms, which could prevent or protect your pruning wounds from the later infections. Again, uh, so we are um, uh, revisiting the, this idea uh, at the speak, we are planning to set up a pruning um, uh, wound trial in a different location in California. So by next year, we are gonna be able to tell you or give you an idea whether you should do or early dormant pruning or delay dormant pruning in your vineyard with the application of the some of those uh, pruning wound protectors. We will get back to you on that one. If applicable, consider the, the, the double pruning um, uh, to reduce the fungal spore infection, which is also um, the, another um, the way of doing uh, uh, when you can apply uh, with the hand pruning. Uh, some of the vineyards could be done in northern part of the, the, the California. Again, it's one of the, um, the labor intense uh, pruning uh, job if it works, if you could do that. So one of my graduate students, Rob Blundell, uh, who has been um, uh, focusing on uh, how to protect these pruning wounds by using not only uh, the, the, the chemicals, but also some of the biocontrol agents in California. So he has been working on that one last two years, which I'm gonna talk to you about a little bit, um, the more information about the, what he have found so far. So what we do with this pruning wound trial is that we come in the vineyard, uh, so we prune them about the one foot long. And then as you can see, we label each one of them. We apply the pruning wound protection as soon as we do the pruning. 24 hours later, we come and then we challenge each one of those pruning wounds with the pathogen that we would like to uh, challenge with. Uh, so in this case, we use Utaipalata and Neofusukakum parum, two of the canker and dieback pathogens. It's very, very common. After a few months, uh, we come back and then collect these first. 
if you look at the, their longitudinal, uh, the, the sign and then symptoms, and then we measure the these, um, uh, discoloration, probably caused by the pathogen or protected uh, by the, these uh, pruning wound protectants. We also make isolations from these discolored area to make sure that we are uh, really dealing the whatever the pathogen that we put in, because uh, in many cases there are some naturally uh, occurring uh, the, the pathogen could come in and then colonize it. Uh, given the fact that the, these studies are being done in the field, we don't have control of the um, other infection comes from uh, outside. So this is the results uh, of the pruning wound protection trial uh, in 2019. In 2019, against the Utipalata, uh, so some of the, um, the, the, the biocontrol agent which has um, the Tyrocoderma uh, uh, and also some of the Bacillus species seems to be working very well uh, comparing with the, with the control. Uh, just to give you an idea that the, this is the number of the person in fact infection uh, from each um, the, 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 the treatment, same letters uh, are, are, the, are the statistically same group. There is no difference between them. So here's the control. So which means the shorter and the column is the better that is working against the uh, grapevine trunk disease pathogens. In this case, uh, these gurus are the one that seems to be working very well uh, to protect your pruning wounds, including some of the Viticel, uh, Polymer, um, uh, Super Shield seems to be working against the Utai uh, some of the Bacillus Valazensis and Teramara, and, and the non Luna experience seems to be working very well if you. Uh, like to uh, apply the, some of those chemicals um, and uh, rally and topsin also uh, working, which is uh, known to uh, to be used to protect the pruning wounds. So in this case, I'm showing you the results from the Neophysococcum parum, which is one of the aggressive pathogen, which is very difficult to control. So all these pruning wound protections seem to be challenged when it comes to different pathogen, uh, comparing with the type of lata. So uh, again, it is, uh, we are dealing with more than 130 different pathogens. Uh, we just picked uh, some of the representatives of the, of the, the grapevine trunk disease pathogen to, to run these uh, trials. So in 2020, we repeated some of these trials in three different locations in California. It seems that the, some of those, again, uh, biocontrol agents seems to be still continue working very well. Um, and in, in here, Thompson and Raleigh also works. Um, there in here, um, uh, untreated control. The, uh, earlier I was uh, talking to you that if you do the uh, pruning in the right time and then leave them without uh, applying anything, some of those pruning wounds could be protected by natural occurring or curing organisms, which we are trying to identify right now. So the rub actually they try to some of those natural occurring organisms, which are some trigodermas and some bacillus species seems to be working very well. So um, that this is the one of the, the, the Utaipa. We repeat the, the, the same thing with the uh, Neophysococcum parum. So again, uh, some of those products uh, are working very well. So uh, all these results that you see in this one is published uh, online in our lab website, if you would like to see and know more about it. So this is the uh, my lab website. When you go to my lab website, fruit crop fungicide trial. So go there. So you are gonna find not only for the uh, the pruning wound protected, but also some other um, the, the fungicide trial that we are doing on the powdery mildew, botrytis, pear scab, and all kinds of results. So if you are interested in knowing more please visit those website and then get more information. In the meantime, we are also trying to identify the natural occurring biological agents, as I mentioned you. So when you do the normal pruning cut without applying anything, within a week or so, all the, uh, the, the, the microorganisms in the air are colonizing. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. So Rob is trying to find out the, all these good guys and identify them and challenge them with the pathogens to, to see if any of those natural occurring organisms could be utilized um, to, to protect the pruning wounds instead of using all kinds of like the other products. 
So um, some of the products seems to be working very well. Some of them are not working as you can see here. And then uh, again, uh, I showed you this one earlier. So some of our products are, are, are challenging uh, some of the known pruning wound protectants. So we are gonna continue working on that one. We have two more trials uh, to evaluate that we repeated these trials. So uh, 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 by the end of this month, we are gonna be able to get those results to, to as well. So Marcella Bustamante is uh, the PhD student in my laboratory who is also focusing on controlling the grapevine trunk disease in, in a different way. So the, the way that we are trying to do is that we are trying to um, the screen the naturally occurring endophytic uh, beneficial organisms that occur within the, within the health vineyard. So if I have to give you an example is that the, some of the vineyard or wines has number of the beneficial organisms within the, their tissues. Some of them have more. It depends on the, the location, cultivar, um, the, uh, the, 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 the microclimate, all kinds of things. If I had to give you an example, it is uh, similar to the, our gut bacteria. How we have the gut bacteria, each person has their own gut, gut bacteria based on their um, uh, diet and everything. So the plants has their own gut microorganism that help them survival, beneficial, or some of them could be the bad. We are trying to identify those beneficial organisms. <clears throat> so in, with this um, the part of the, the trial, we uh, collected uh, samples from uh, 10 different um, uh, locations of the, of the, of the California uh, to look for the different uh, microclimate and then collected some wood samples because we were specifically interested in uh, endophytic organisms in the wood tissue because our, uh, most of the grapevine trunk diseases are colonizing or, or, or affecting the wood tissue of the grapevine. That's where, that's where we were interested in. So this is the, the map that we collected samples so far. And then uh, we are in the process of the in vitro screening of these beneficial organisms, not only from the plant, but also the soil rhizospheric area. Again, um, uh, similar studies, uh, similar results that the Rob has done. Marcella also found some good candidates that are working very well in the laboratory. So now we are in the process of uh, trying to put these microorganisms on the living plant in the uh, greenhouse. And then eventually we are gonna take them into the field to see if they can have long-term um, protection of the, these grapevine trunk diseases. Um, um, uh, the, the, or prevention or control to grape mount trunk disease in the vineyard. It's kind of like the vaccine, I would say. So we are trying to find a good vaccine that we can put into the grapevine that can, that can protect the pro grapevine um, uh, from these uh, pathogens. So in this part of the, my talk, I'm gonna talk to you about the, what we do or to control the grape mount trunk disease in the nursery stocks. So I just to point out to you that the, uh, sometime um, the, 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 some of the grapevine could be contaminated the, at the graft union at the, at the nursery level. If the nursery level, if the, the, the pruning um, the equipment is not sterilized or cleaned very well. In this case, you see uh, at the one graft union, it looks like from outside it's callous very well. However, when you look at the, this uh, line, actually callous, try to overgrow in the part that it doesn't able to connect. From outside, it looks like the good callusing, but from inside, there's no good connections, which is um, a very, very important part. That could be uh, the, the prevented uh, at the nursery level. So this is another one. So when you look from outside, it's the, the callusing, but there's a disconnection here. The plant is disconnected from that area as well. So another problem could be the callusing issue. So uh, we are uh, putting a stick in the ground. So, uh, if there is no enough and good callusing at the bottom, that could be an entry point for, for the, 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 the soil burn pathogens, which is very important that you can see these discoloration probably caused by the some of those pathogens get in uh, when we first planted those, uh, those plants. That. So callusing that you would like to have complete the cover at the bottom, there is no open entry point for the pathogens to get 
skin. That's very important. Latent infection that I, I mentioned you before. Uh, so that, that's the most important. So which means some of these uh, grapevine trunk disease could be naturally present in the vine that nobody can do anything about it. They can come up to the pathogen later on when the stress condition comes. In order to control or prevent this, uh, this is the approach that we are coming up. So what we are trying in the nursery level, which we are collaborating with three different nurseries in California, I would like to thank to each one of them for their collaboration, providing us uh, space, wine, and, and all the, the labor uh, that is required to do the, this uh, study. So in this study, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to apply some of the chemicals that could control these uh, pathogens, as well as some biocontrol agents, apply them at the cutting level under the negative pressure, which is the vacuum infiltration that would allow us to, to the, 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 the insect or um, the absorb those um, materials into the cuttings. That way we could control those, some of those um, endophytic uh, microorganisms uh, or latent infection organisms. And then uh, we just grafted uh, in the nursery level and then we looked at callosing rate. The reason that we wanted to look at the, how this vacuum infiltration would affect the callosing and rooting because you are applying a, a kind of pressure uh, or vacuum pressure on the on the cuttings that you want to know if that physical pressure would affect uh, callusing or rooting. It looks like so far this is our second year it hasn't been affecting at all. So we just planted those um, the grapevines uh, in the uh, vineyard. Now we are, we are doing the long term uh, monitoring to see if any of those um, the grapevine trunk disease would affect. Uh, in these uh, grapevines in the long uh, term. So this is the part of the, the protection or prevention uh, studies that we are working. So this is the end of the, my talk. I would like to thank to my lab crew who has been doing all the hard work as well as all the farm advisors who has been helping us uh, collaborating, giving all, the, all the, 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 the samples and then providing information. So most importantly, I would like to thank our, our funding resources, American Vineyard Foundation and California Grape Rootsack Research Foundation has been funding our uh, this research for uh, two years. So this is our third years and, and then um, we have learned a lot, get good, very good results. We are hoping that uh, by the end of the next year, we are gonna come up with a kind of biocontrol product or one more than one biocontrol product, product that uh, could be utilized by the uh, growers in California. With that, thank you very much. If I have time for the question, I will be happy to answer. Thank you, Aki, much appreciated. Um, I'm gonna turn you over to Aubrey. We have a couple, a few questions in the Q&A. Right, the first question is, how long are disease spores active on pruning debris on the soil? And is it helpful to remove prunings from under the vines? So uh, I didn't mention that one, it's a very good point. When we have the old wood, wood pruning wound on the ground, when the wood start degrading, all of those grapevine trunk disease pathogens could produce fruiting bodies on those, the, uh, the, the old pruning wounds, unless you mix them or bury them under the soil and then they can degrade within a short time. Anything that could be um, exposed with the moisture and then and the light, that's gonna be able to produce some uh, fruiting buds. So how do you deal, how do you wanna deal that? You can take them away from the vineyard and then you can just um, shred, shred them or um, um, chip them and then mix with the, with the soil, which is um, uh, a lot of work that you have to do. All right. Um, the next question is, uh, this person tried mixing Rally, Topsin, and Biotam and submitted treated pruning wounds for isolation and only 7% of their cuts were colonized. 
Could the low rate of colonization by trichoderma be due to symbiosis lost through the fungicides? No. Uh, first of all, trichoderma is a fungus, living organism, beneficial organism. Topsin and Raleigh are fungicide. If you apply both of them together, you are killing your beneficial organism with the fungicide. That doesn't work. You have to apply either your trichoderma-based products, you have Biotem, Vintech is another product that works very well. They just talk to them, they are uh, submitted their registrations. You will have uh, two trichoderma products available very soon and you can apply. When you apply the trichoderma product, don't apply any fungicide. You are killing your that beneficial. So you have to do, choose either one of them. We also found that trichoderma based product could be protecting your pruning wound longer than the other chemicals because they are able to colonize on the pruning wound, they can last a little bit longer. So you gotta consider uh, that part as well, okay? Okay, uh, the next is, is there any research on rhyme through the drip system for uh, trunk diseases? Okay, so we are um, right now, part of the research that we are doing it. Um, uh, so we have, we don't have the, the solid, results that the rhyme could be protecting these grapevines moving into, this, into the root and then moving into the, so, the, the root tissues. We don't have evidence of that. However, when we apply the rhyme uh, on the pruning wound to protect the pruning wound, it works in some level to protect the pruning wounds. There is not, nothing, but we don't have any evidence that rhyme could be absorbed by the roots and then moving into the into the xylem tissues yet. So we are, uh, it's very difficult uh, way of approving that. Uh, so we are doing the, like the, the, the part of the experiment right now, but we don't have that results yet. Okay. Okay. Next is, do you have any recommendation for the timing of suckering a newly planted vine? There are many buds on the graft union of, for one-year-old vines. And if the vines are suckered in the late spring, the crew has to use shears to cut the suckers, which results in many open wounds. Can this cause large galls at the union? Okay, so are you asking, when you say gall, are you talking about the um, um, acrobacterium infection or grapevine trunk disease, which doesn't matter. Both of them could be infected. As long as you make wound, uh, those two fungal, fungi or bacterial pathogens could get in and then colonize and then cause problems there. So the most important part is that if you could remove the, those suckers during the dry season at least, when there is no precipitation in the air, that's the ideal. Or you can apply pruning wound protections when you prune the, remove the those suckers, which uh, also another thing that you could uh, do it. But uh, answering your question um, uh, that, yes, any open wound could be entry point for these pathogens. Okay. Uh, the next question is, how many days after prune cut do you need to let it dry so no infection? And how many days from prune cut until rain? Well, the studies that has been done in the past show that pruning wounds could be susceptible for several months, at least a couple or three months. Uh, that's, that's the one. Um, um, what I would recommend you is that the, when you make the cut, pruning wounds, make the pruning wounds, apply the, your protection material, whatever you decide to do that, as soon as possible. If there is a re rain event comes between that, as soon as rain goes away or stops, apply it right after that. So let's say you prune it and sometime the, all those prunings continue bleeding. The water is just the sap coming out. At that time, I will say, wait until the sap stops, which, which sometimes takes uh, 48 hours, sometimes a couple of days, and then apply your um, uh, pruning wound protection. I cannot give you the, give you the time, but it depends on the precipitation. Why? During the precipitation, rain or any other event, spores of these pathogens are in the air. 
that's what you are trying to protect your pruning wounds from. So we can make that kind of decision how to do that. All righty. Uh, the next question is, is there a benefit to applying trichoderma products with an adjuvant to increase the chances of colonization? If so, which one? With, with, say that again, could you repeat that question? Um, is there a benefit to applying trichodermal products uh, with an adjuvant? Uh, okay. I, I, we haven't tried the adjuvant. I don't think you need adjuvant. Um, because it's a living organism as soon as they find the, okay, let me give you that. Let's say this is the pruning wound, right? Let's say you cut it. As soon as you cut it, if it is not bleeding, you are, you are gonna have some sap coming up because of the natural occurrence. Then you apply the trichoderma based product in that sap, it has some nutrition already provided by the vitamin wine. So they're gonna colonize that area. So the way that trichoderma products pro protect the, your pruning wound is that they, by competition, which means they colonize within a short time so much that when the pathogen comes later on, they cannot find the spot to colonize and then get into the, and the pruning wounds. So um, um, this is not the something that you wanna, uh, you want this um, the adjuvants to get into the bark or something like that. I don't think you need it. Um, this is the first question that I'm being asked about it. Um, we haven't tried it. I never thought that trying it. Um, I don't think you need any adjuvant. Okay. And the last question is, why does ESCA show up on a vine one year, but not the next? Very good point. Uh, I almost uh, spent my whole life on that ESCA. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> why? It's not predictable. As, a, as, as I mentioned you earlier, ESCA disease are the vascular diseases, which means pathogens are within the vascular tissue. They stay there. Everything is, everybody is happy. If the wine is not stressed, no problem. Pathogens are sometimes happy and then they stay good. No problem. As soon as some stress factors comes, which could be mostly overheat or lack of the water or drought. Uh, most of the ASCA show up in early June in California. Why? In uh, February, March, April, May, everything is good. Everything is happy, nice. And then in, in the first or second week of June, we have a high heat. That creates a stress in the, in the vine, which triggers those ASCA group of the pathogen within the vascular tissue. And then they start producing secondary toxin metabolite that causes symptom. Next year, pathogen is still there, but you don't have that much stress to trigger that pathogen to produce secondary metabolites. So, because next year you have new shoots um, and new uh, the cordons and everything's okay. But over several years, your wine is going down because of the each year stress, those uh, pathogens are colonizing more and more. That's why, uh, for the ESCA, you see one year when the stress factor is higher, sometimes you don't see uh, ESCA. That's the reason. Okay, those are okay. all of the questions. Thank you, Akif.